are working. As you know, on Friday, the Government published a roadmap for reopening society and business, which sets out the plan to ease the COVID-19 restrictions and reopen Ireland's economy and society in a phased manner. You can read about it on gov.ie slash roadmap. The roadmap will start from May 18th and sets out five stages for unlocking restrictions at three-week intervals. It's a flexible framework based on an assessment of risk. As we ease restrictions, we will keep monitoring the situation. It sets out how we can keep the level of transmission as low as possible while balancing continuing restrictions proportionately with the positive social and economic benefits which can be brought by lifting the restrictions. In the meantime, as of today, it's possible to travel within five kilometres of your, of your home for the purposes of exercise, accompanied only by members of your own household and observing social distancing at all times. For those who are cocooning, the advice has been to stay at home because we know some groups are more susceptible to the disease. However, for many of you, that is frustrating. From today, there is new advice about how to go outside for exercise and fresh air safely. The key message is to avoid all contact with other people, maintain a no-touch policy and wash your hands on returning home. It is still recommended that people cocooning avoid the shops. If you need assistance in this regard, there are plenty of local supports, including the local community call phone number. You can find all the details of the roadmap on gov.ie and some useful guides have been published on Merrion Street social media channels and in newspapers and other media. And I'd urge you to read these and familiarise yourself with the different stages of the plan. We are very aware how difficult the current restrictions are for people and their families. And there are a number of other supports available on gov.ie slash together and yourmentalhealth.ie. So please use these facilities and contact your GP if you're very stressed. The roadmap is a gradual stepwise plan towards reopening. Our ability to open the economy and society will be entirely dependent on our success in slowing down the virus. Therefore, I want to remind you, as I usually do, of the vital public health advice that is as important as ever in helping to slow the spread of the virus. Wash your hands regularly and thoroughly, use good cough and sneeze etiquette, and observe the social distancing measures. Business supports. On Saturday, the Government announced a series of additional measures worth more than £6 billion to further support small, medium and larger enterprises that are negatively impacted by COVID-19. They aim to help our businesses to restart, reconnect and rehire staff who have been laid off or furloughed. These measures include a £10,000 restart grant for micro and small businesses based on a weights waiver rebate from 2019, a three-month commercial rates waiver for impacted businesses, a two billion pandemic stabilisation and recovery fund within the Irish Strategic Investment Fund, which will make capital available to medium and large enterprises on commercial terms, and a two billion COVID-19 credit guarantee scheme to support lending to small and medium enterprises for terms ranging from three to six months, which will be below market interest rates. It also includes the warehousing of tax liabilities for a period of 12 months after recommencement of trading, during which time there will be no death, death enforcement action taken by revenue and no interest charge accruing in respect of warehouses debt. There is also a commitment to local authorities to make up the rates shortfall so that local authorities can continue to provide full services to the public. In addition, the Banking and Payments Federation of Ireland has announced an extension of payment breaks for businesses and households to six months for those requiring assistance, which is being provided to bank and non-bank customers impacted by COVID-19. It is essential that a customer is fully engage with their lender to avail of these extensions. The Temporary Wage Subsidy Scheme. Almost 52,100 employers are now registered with revenue for the scheme. Over 427,400 employees have now received at least one payment under the scheme, and this does not include additional employees who may receive a subsidy as a result of payments generated today. 
between yesterday and today revenue generated payments to employers under the scheme of 68.7 million. These are the final payments made under the transitional phase of the scheme whereby eligible employers were reimbursed a maximum subsidy of 410 in respect of each eligible employee regardless of the employee's income. These also include the first payments under the operational phase of the scheme where eligible employers are reimbursed a subsidy based on the average revenue net weekly pay and the gross pay submitted on payroll for each eligible employee. The payments generated both yesterday and today will be in the bank accounts of the majority of the respective employers tomorrow the 6th of May. These transactions will be processed separately so that the eligible employers can distinguish between the transitional phase payment from the operational phase payment. The cumulative value of payments made to employers under the scheme is €785 million. Euro. On the labour market, a working paper on the initial impacts of the COVID-19 pandemic on Ireland's labour market has been published. The outbreak of COVID-19 and the essential public health measures to contain the spread of the virus saw the largest monthly increase in the unemployment rate in the history of the state. The most severely impacted sectors are tourism, hospitality and food services, retail and construction. This research will form part of the work of planning for getting people back to work as quickly as possible as our economy and society reopens. Today, approximately 598,000 people will receive their weekly payment of 350 under the COVID-19 pandemic unemployment payment scheme. This is the smallest week-on-week -week increase in the number of payments since this scheme commenced in mid-March. The value of the weekly payment is in the region of 209 million. Approximately 73,000 people have contacted the department in order to close their claim. And it's possible to do this by logging on to gov.ie and accessing the close payment option. The community call for are continuing to operate around the country to assist those who are playing their part by self-isolating or cocooning. If, you're in need, if you are in need, it's important to remember that they are there to support you with the collection and delivery of groceries and medical supplies, to lend a hand or just to lend a friendly ear. Yesterday, the community call for received 300 calls nationally and 100 follow-up calls were made to people who contacted the helpline. Nationally, since the 31st of March, they have received 42,000 calls and have made approximately 12,500 follow-up calls. If you need help, or as important, if you know someone who needs help, or if you want to volunteer, please contact your local forum and the helpline numbers for the local numbers are on gov.ie. And as I've mentioned before, the Fora Helplines are partnering with Alone, the national charity for older people. Yesterday, Alone's national helpline received approximately 100 calls. Last week, it received over 1,700 calls in total and delivered over 200 practical supports. If someone needs information, reassurance, or just to talk to someone, they can call the national phone, phone line on 0818 222. 024. You can also contact alone if you're experiencing difficulties with physical or mental health, you're worried about finance, or loneliness, and any other challenge you're experiencing. Culture. A global audience of over 320,000 people have tuned in to the first 50 performances of Ireland Performs, the new initiative from Culture Ireland and Facebook to promote and support Irish-based artists and performers during the COVID-19 emergency. Over 50 artists have performed from all kinds of inventive places, including a beach, a polytunnel, a van and a shed. Culture Ireland is closing the application scheme for Ireland Performs today. There was a very high level of interest by artists and a large volume of applications were received and many are still in the process of consideration. In addition, a new initiative from the Heritage Council and the National Museum of Ireland starts today. It invites you to share your discoveries and insights about the hidden heritage of your locality. Due to COVID-19, we have all become much more familiar with our immediate locality. This can help us to see things in a new light by noticing something we might have overlooked before. And heritage is a very broad term. It covers everything from archaeology and architecture like old ancient monuments, old graveyards or historic buildings, 
It can be documents, photographs or letters. It includes natural heritage like flora and fauna, rivers, lakes and mountains. It also includes local names for fields, music and songs, poems and storytelling, crafts and traditions, sports and leisure. Know Your 5K is a new initiative from the Heritage Council which provides an opportunity to share discoveries about our hidden heritage. The project aims to help the public to use a wealth of online resources to find out more about the story of their locality. And you can find out more about Know Your 5K on gov.ie. Funerals. COVID-19 impacts hugely on how we say farewell to our loved ones. Some of the ceremonies, traditions and rituals that are fundamental to the grieving process in Ireland are no longer available to us and we have to find new ways of doing things. It has been necessary to limit attendance at funerals to 10 people with social distancing of at least two metres. For those people who cannot attend, we would encourage you to connect via the various communications channels that are available. This restriction on numbers is hard, but we urge people to please adhere to it to protect all those involved from COVID-19. Mourners, funeral directors, the religious and others who officiated services and other workers. A useful guide for the bereaved which addresses some of the issues around funerals at this time can be found on gov.ie. Children and families. As you know, last week alternative arrangements for junior search were announced and I'm just going to recap those for you. The work and achievement of a third year junior cycle students will be recognised with a state certificate from the Department of Education and Skills. As soon as possible after the end of the current school year, students will receive a written school report on their learning achievements in each subject, short coursework and or a priority learning unit. Schools are also being given autonomy to decide whether to run school based assessments and what form they should take. Options include school designed exams, tasks, projects, assignments, essay style questions, presentations or other things agreed at a local level. Guidance for schools and reporting to students and parents will be published by the Department of Education and Skills and this guidance will be developed with the advice of the advisory group of stakeholders. The State Examinations Commission is also being asked to put in place special arrangements for adult learners to give them an opportunity to take final junior cycle exams for which they entered in autumn 2020. These arrangements are being made in light of the exceptional circumstances presented by COVID-19 and the decision gives students and their families more clarity and certainty. It also gives schools freedom to decide how best to assess the progress of students after three years of hard work and learning. Crinion Oog 2020. I also wanted to highlight today that Crinion Oog 2020 will be launched today. It's Ireland's national day of free creative activities for children and young people under the government's In This Together campaign, which supports everyone to stay connected, stay active and look after your physical and mental well-being. Crinion Oog will take place on Saturday the 13th of June in association with the local authorities and RTE. In light of the public health restrictions currently in place, we're encouraging children and young people to start now on preparing their creative and cultural ideas in their own homes and gardens for Saturday the 13th of June. And for more information, see gov.ie. International. Yesterday, the Taoiseach announced that Ireland has pledged 18 million as part of the global efforts to defeat the coronavirus. This funding is in support of Gavi, the Vaccine Alliance, for use between 2020 and 2025 and will support Gavi's important work in procuring vaccines and distributing them to the world's poorest and most vulnerable countries, including a vaccine for COVID-19 when it becomes available. This brings the total that Ireland has committed to combat COVID-19 to 78 million. This will support the vital work of multilateral institutions including the World Health Organization, UNICEF and the UN Central Emergency Response Fund and will assist NGOs and bilateral partners including in Tanzania, Malawi, Uganda and Ethiopia. Finally then a couple of things. On the research side, last Wednesday the government announced details of the first 26 projects that will receive 5 million funding under the newly established 
National Coordinated Research and Innovation Response to the COVID-19. This will complement the ongoing research already underway in higher education institutions. Projects will address key areas such as frontline healthcare, diagnostics, infection control, contact tracing, mental health, other potential treatments, and the management of the mitigation measures related to social distancing and isolation. The research projects are part of a broader initiative by the Irish State to mitigate and manage COVID-19 by unlocking the potential of Irish-based researchers and innovators and to complement similar work all around the world. And there's further information on gov.ie. Finally, the Government's roadmap acknowledges that the measures we have introduced go beyond anything we might contemplate in normal times. The approach that the Government has adopted is grounded in guidance, evidence and experience from international organisations and other countries. The roadmap also sets out a framework for future decision-making by Government. In deciding if further restrictions can be lifted, Government will be informed by a regular report from the Department of Health on the latest data on the progression of the disease, the capacity and resilience of the health service, our ability to shield and care for risk groups, and an assessment of the risk of other deaths and illness as a consequence of the restrictions. Government decisions will be informed by the advice of the Department of Health, as well as other social and economic considerations. Over the coming weeks, we will also continue to work with the stakeholders right across government to support business and services to prepare for the lifting of restrictions. We need to find ways which support a gradual restart of activity while protecting the health and safety of workers, customers and clients and give everyone the assurance they want and deserve. What will continue to be a feature of our lives for some time, and especially as we tentatively reopen, is a continued focus on social distancing and hygiene measures. This is a good point to tell you that today the HSE marks the World Health Organisation Hand Hygiene Day with the message Hand hygiene is one of the most important things that we can do to stop the spread of COVID-19. Every year when World Hand Hygiene Day comes around, we wonder how we will find a fresh way to talk to people about the importance of hand hygiene in preventing infection. This year it's all very different. Preventing infection with COVID-19 is now on everyone's mind. Recent research undertaken by the Department of Health shows that in relation to safe behaviours, 96% of people are washing their hands more often as a result of COVID-19. The research also shows that 90% of people are looking ahead and say they will continue to wash their hands frequently after the pandemic. We want people to keep on going with hand hygiene, help your children to learn good hand hygiene and help us to stop the spread of COVID-19 and other infections. Also in relation to hand hygiene, the Health Service Executive have been getting a lot of queries about wearing disposable gloves in public. They have advised that a key message for Hand Hygiene Day is that they do not re recommend using gloves while doing your shopping or when you're out and about. If there are bugs on your gloves, these bugs often end up on your hands when you take the gloves off, and from there they can be very, very easily end up on your mouth, nose and eyes. It's much better to clean your hands regularly and properly. This is one of the many things, along with social distancing, that each of us can do to, to allow us to exit safely and smoothly over the coming weeks from the current situation. Thank you for staying the course.